Okay, so I know that there are 20 people signed up. So I'm just going to give it a couple of moments because sometimes uh, people, hi there, welcome, we haven't started yet. Uh, sometimes it's navigating Zoom, isn't it? And the links and so on. And I know that a few of you here obviously know how to do it really well. <laughs> but if you haven't done this link before in Zoom, it, it does take a little bit of working out. So I'm just going to give it one minute. Wendy will be here as well in a minute. So, oh, it's your friend Lansing. <laughs> that's nice. Oh, that's good. Okay, good. So I kind of don't really want to start until a few more people come on because I'll sort of find myself repeating myself. But I am, you know, excited about this. And, and um, I do feel that when we get guided to do something, then, you know, there's always a much bigger reason for it and much bigger plan. And it's something that is very dear to my heart with children. And uh, I won't start the presentation until a few more people come on, but I, oh, that's brilliant, Michelle. Thank you. Uh, we can always, I mean, everybody that signed up uh, will get the replay anyway. So they'll get the replay and they'll have time. Uh, to feed back to me but what's really nice is to actually hear people's thoughts on the call that's what would be really nice so I can really hear and put together something oh Christine is here now that's good Jennifer people are joining always whenever we put a time uh, quite often people join about 10 minutes later which sometimes tricky at the start of the session but yeah so so many of you know me here and it's it's a real passion of mine uh to make a difference in the world and uh my background is uh, for for katie you haven't met before um my background is science really uh traditional psychotherapy psychology i worked in child protection for 10 12 years and I worked on the trauma end of child protection and uh, so I worked with drugs and alcohol domestic abuse and uh, and a lot of child trauma and uh, I found myself uh, working in London doing that and alongside that I realized that uh, I had a deep connection to understanding that we were much more than mind and body, that we were also this incredible being that had incredible power within us. And so my years working as a psychologist and a psychotherapist seems like a past life now. It seems like a previous life because uh, it's kind of not something that I really tap into very often. But I think that background um, and the the qualifications that I did in that was a really good grounding to be able to hold a space very well and very safely. And there are a few people here, um, Lansing included, uh, who, you know, know how I work and, and I hold a space where I want everyone to feel safe. I want everyone to feel that they can say what they need to say and that it doesn't go any further than in my groups and in my private sessions. Um, Tina is absolutely fine. <laughs> I just got your email, it just popped up. <laughs> Tina had an issue getting on, so I added her. Um, so welcome, Tina. So I was just saying that, you know, my background is really science and psychotherapy and psychology. I'm also a neuropsychologist. So what that is, is somebody who works with the metaphysical causes of dis-ease. Uh, so really looking at the messages that are held in the body. And one of the things uh, why that happens is because we have unwanted trauma and we have, well, let's just say stress. OK, so most of that stress is from shock and trauma. And sometimes it's stuff we brought in with us. But for the purpose of, of the scene this evening, I'll just talk about it that way that, you know, we've experienced many things in our childhood experience which has led us to perceive the world in a way that perhaps doesn't feel safe. OK, so what I really wanted to do um, was to put this out to parents and teachers and carers uh, today to really have a conversation about what you feel children really need 
and what you would like for the children that you work with or the children that you have or you, if you're a grandparent, whatever. And um, what I've done for many years is create courses and workshops. Um, I'm 50 now and I'm a parent of two children. Uh, one is 12 going on 16, that's my daughter called Sara. And I have a son who's 11 called Martin. And uh, I'm a single parent and I've been a single parent since they were two and a half and 11 months old. So I've brought them up myself um, in a conscious way. And so one of the things um, that I bring to this is I'm not only experiencing it firsthand as a parent, but I'm also a professional working in this field. So I like to bring it all together and make it really real. You know, I, I've been there, I've done it, I've worn the t-shirt, I have two children, and uh, it's a tricky time at the moment. But by working with them and helping them understand their emotions and helping them to realize that they have this pure potential within them and i've always done that with them they don't have any fear at all about what's happening in the world at the moment i mean literally they just brush it off um and that is because they just haven't been brought up that way they haven't been brought up to fear something outside of them but that doesn't mean that it's not a challenging time at the moment working from home and to others working from home or pretending to work from home i might say they're not really doing their school work but they kind of are you know it's like kind of a pretending that's going on so yeah, so really what I wanted to do was to talk to everybody tonight about uh, what they feel they would like for their children or the children that they work with, and also to offer it out. Um, my thinking was to run some online uh, meditation groups, mindfulness, I'm a trained mindfulness teacher as well, and to actually help children to come to a space where for at least half an hour once a week they feel this fun and excitement about the world and creating and releasing any stress and any fear and i'll show you how i want to do that in a moment with my slides and these slides come from a course that i put together a couple of years ago and i presented it at the european energy conference um, in 2018 and at that time, in fact, Susan, um, who is here in the corner there, you can see her wave, Susan. <laughs> Susan actually came on that, that course and it was a live course. So she's got it there. Um, it was a live course that I taught and it was really for teachers. Um, it was really for teachers, wasn't it, Susan? It was for teachers. And, and I put it together because I wanted to bring this work, which I call 60 Seconds of Colour, into schools. But at that time, let's just say the universe wasn't ready and i feel that it's time now for us to really be thinking outside of the box and i'll show my slides in just a moment but thinking outside of the box about our children and thinking outside of the box about how we can help them and acknowledge their feelings and perhaps they're not in the school system at the moment some of them are mine aren't at the moment so it's finding ways to help them understand through all this confusion and people outside of them maybe you're not feeling fearful but maybe your parents are or maybe the grandparents are or maybe school friends are and they're not you know it's a real confusing time and with face coverings and um all sorts of weird things going on in the world it's i don't want to use this new normal because i don't think normal is ever there anyway but i think it is thinking about it from a perspective of how can we help children realize that literally is just a mask and that's all it is and it doesn't have to define them for who they are they might have to wear it in the uk definitely just for a few minutes if they go on public transport or in a shop in fact i think we've got that coming up soon where we've got to wear them in shops but it doesn't define them as a person and it doesn't define them in who they're going to be in the world and i you know one of the things that i talk to my children always about is that they can be and they can experience anything 
that they want to in the world. And I'm there just to support them and guide them along the way. I didn't have my children for me. I have my children for them. And I think that's really key as well to think about. And so one of the other things that I want to share that's coming up as I'm talking is that I work very, very intuitively. So I'm known as spiritual scientist. That's because I use my connection to my guidance, my higher self, whatever you want to call it, or we could just call it universal source okay and so i use that for 25 30 years i've used that and if you want to hear my story of how that actually happened how i awakened spiritually you can listen to episode one of my podcast which is called the spiritual awakener so you can find that everywhere and so you'll hear my whole story then i'm not going to go into it now but essentially what i do is i incorporate the spiritual and the science when i work with adults and I help them heal the inner child as long as, as, uh, as well as lots of other things as well. But let's just say the inner child for now. And so working with the inner child, we're really working with those little parts of us that are outside of us saying, I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. The world's scary. I couldn't possibly do that. You know, all those things that ring around and perhaps go in your head. Well, they're held as a vibrational set point within your body so if you imagine that you've got your you've got your body and you've got your heart obviously and you've got you know this part inside of you that is a, a kind of an incredible part of you that knows everything that knows all the answers to everything for you and your journey is your journey alone and so Anybody, nobody else can tell you what your journey should be. And I call it a mission. And it's for us as parents or us as carers or us as teachers to really bring that part of consciousness, I feel, out in our children. Not to tell them necessarily what to do, but to offer them that, that conversation so that they know that they can make let's say limited choices you might have a few choices that you want to give them and, and then you don't mind which one they choose but you're giving them that empowerment so that they can make choices for themselves and the other thing about that that i'm really feeling is that we have to work on ourselves you know when i um, being a parent i know that if i'm stressed about anything my children will show me that more and more and more they will show me that and that's because we are all connected i'm connected to you here i'm connected to to people outside of here in my street wherever we're all connected so we're all part of uh, i like to call it a unified field of consciousness but we might just say that you know we're all connected but because we're all having this experience together Okay, and there's no separation with that. We're all here sharing the world together. Okay, so any thoughts or oh, there's a couple of messages. Let me have a look. Okay, Katie. Okay, oh, thanks, Michelle. I'm a mental health therapist. Excellent. I have a private practice that I'm building. I work in residential centre. Brilliant. High level care and trauma. Ah. Oh. Oh, 12 and 8, similar, similar, <laughs> kindred spirits. <laughs> yes, oh, Katie, that's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And it's so, so important, isn't it, to um, incorporate that, what we do as, as work, what we do as our profession, I don't call it work, but what we do is our mission and actually then bring that into our experience at home. So that's fantastic. Has anybody got any questions? Perhaps Tina, I know lots of you, I know on here, Alexis, anyone got any questions before I start showing you my exciting, I've got some exciting things to show you. Any questions? No? Okay, right. Now I'm going to do some techie stuff. So hold on. Let's give this a go. Ah, here we go. So I'm hoping I'm able to still see myself. Oh, I can. How amazing. Gosh, I'm impressing myself with my technology every day. I was just going to say, Wendy's on here. So um, those of you that, that, that know Wendy, you'll know she's always here on these groups. But if you don't know Wendy, then Wendy is um, a very good friend of mine. She's a mother as well, but she's also my assistant. So if you ever get copied in on, on emails with Wendy, you'll know it's because she's my assistant. Okay. And she's amazing. So 
this is what I presented. So this presentation, I'm going to whiz through it. It's not going to be like it was when I did it at the energy conference, but I'm going to whiz through this presentation and just show you why I created 60 seconds of color. And then I'm going to demonstrate it to you. Okay. So we're going to have a bit of fun with it. All right. So here you go. Let me see if I can find my mouse. Here we go. So this, as we can see here, it's um, a powerful image. And, and the reason why I put that one in on the presentation is really, this is disturbing because when you think of it, all these words, and I'm not just saying words, but what's going on in the environment, what's going on in the outside world. If you leave your television on, if you leave your radio on, you, children are through osmosis going to be hearing these words and they're going to be feeling this fear. OK, and so what happens with that is they start to perceive the world in that way. So this was really for teachers, you know, when I was creating this. And so what I wanted really was for teachers to realize that if they constantly put a child down, not you, Susan, don't worry, I know you'd never do that. But if they constantly put a child down um, or say, oh, you couldn't possibly, you can't do that or you can't do that. And I've heard teachers do it. Like, I've heard them. Yeah. And they've said, oh, don't be silly or something like that. Then we're constantly um, putting our child down and also stopping them from feeling that confidence and that self-worth within them. And also we don't know what's going on in their home. So the when you're a teacher, especially that is a key moment in time where you're giving that child that sense of safety. Okay. So I brought, that's why I did that slide. Uh, yeah. So teachers are stressed. So parents are stressed. Uh, carers are stressed. Uh, we, you know, we're stressed. So what happens with that stress is that as we are stressed, the child responds to that stress. So often they will feel it and play it out, perhaps through conversation or anger or destruction or, you know, sadness or depression. So they will play it out or they shut down and they shut down by literally just not hearing you. So it literally it just goes straight over because they're shutting down a little bit of their heart. OK. So let's look outside of the box and find a way to help children cope with stress, okay? So I created uh, the peace scale. Um, you might like this, Katie. I created this uh, peace scale because what I didn't want to do was to talk about too much about um, the, the do's and the don'ts of teaching, but to help teachers understand that when a child is in low energy and they're in this part of them that feels they can't concentrate, is it possible that they're feeling a sense of sadness or fear, as you can see here on the screen, or a disconnect? And when I'm talking about a disconnect, I'm talking about this part of them that feels really unsafe in the world. OK, and what I found, um, I worked with veterans for quite a long time uh, with PTSD. Uh, I specialised in it for, for a few years. And what I found was that when we healed the parts of them as children that felt disconnected. And when I say disconnected, I'm talking about disconnected from their true inner guidance. OK their true knowing, their true knowing that they're always loved and looked after by the universe. When um, I found that when we healed the disconnected part or the perceived disconnected part, because obviously we're never disconnected, then they started to heal the post-traumatic stress very quickly. And so I sort of stumbled upon the fact that when we healed the feeling of disconnect to source or to our inner guidance, that actually we work towards then acceptance of self. And then of course, as you can see here, high energy and this feeling of, you know, excitement about life, right? So that's why I created the peace scale. And I do use this a lot actually. So when we're thinking about mindfulness, you know, Ruby Rax um, was talking to politicians and the politicians actually joined her, you know, they joined her in this mindfulness exercise, which then led 
the NHS. Um, I know if some of you in America and you're listening to this, then the NHS is our health service here and uh, led them to approve mindfulness, which was an incredible step towards people taking back their own empowerment in their mental health. And I thought that was really key. So yeah, we can, we can look at this and see that, you know, actually what the NHS decided, and, and obviously it's nice, nice approved, um, and when it's nice approved, you know, it gets the tick box. And so a way to prevent depression. I mean, that was key when this came out. It was key because obviously, as we know, you know, there's a lot of medication that's used with adults and children. And often we know that, well, always we know that medication suppresses the causal reason for why that message is being played out in the physical body or in the mind. Okay, so this is a great thing. So it's really important that um, to breathe. And of course, we would think that would just be a natural thing to do. And of course it is. But breathing is really important. When we're breathing through our mouth, and don't get me started about the masks, I might have to stand, stand on my soapbox about this. But when we're breathing through our mouth, we're actually in what's called the sympathetic nervous system. So we're activating that part of us which is in high alert okay so when we are breathing in through our nose and out through our mouth we're actually activating the parasympathetic which essentially is calming our central nervous system down so a question to ask might be how big is your amygdala okay it's got quite a lot of laughs at the conference as you can probably imagine but no it was for adults obviously <laughs> and uh if you think about your amygdala being in the center of your brain then you know think about well, well how activated is it are you in your fight and flight freeze response or and the reptilian brain or are you in your parasympathetic nervous system which makes it smaller okay so some of you I know that are on my groups here recognize Color Energy Clearing from Sparkle to Success, which is another program I ran. And this is just the basic understanding of what the colors are. And, and you'll understand why I'm showing you this a bit later. But essentially what I found um, was that colors were really key to knowing the emotions. So when a child picked a particular color, or an adult did, but when a child picked a particular color, it would tell us emotionally where they were in that moment. Okay, so this isn't for the children, this is for the adults. And then I created something called 60 Seconds of Color. And so I thought to myself, how can we get this into schools? How can we actually help children at least three times a day? And I spoke to many teachers and they said to me, we haven't got any time. We haven't got any time. I said, could you, could you spare 20 seconds three times a day? And they said, well, maybe, maybe, maybe not. You know, and that's, that's like, I don't think that's a big ask really when you're thinking about children's mental health. But anyway, so 20 seconds three times a day, I wanted children to be in a space where they were connecting and they were grounding and they were breathing in a favorite color. I'm gonna do that together shortly. And I wanted it for three times a day because when they came into school, I wanted them to start school with this feeling of connection, safety and calmness, because then of course, they're going to be able to listen and hear and feel heard. And then after break, after lunch, I wanted them to come in to the next part of the day and do the same. And it might have a different color and the teachers would be able to see, was there a theme in the colors of stars? I particularly use stars in the colored stars that they were choosing or were they all different, you know, so they could actually really get to know that child without even talking to them about it. And then they could perhaps talk to them about their emotions and circle time or whatever, uh, whatever age it was that I was work they were working with. So 60 Seconds of Colour was born, but I spoke to many schools and they just didn't have the time. 
I even offered it for free. I offered it for free across all the schooling systems and everyone said we can't fit it into our curriculum. So, is that? So that, well, yes, we were, I always wanted to create empowerment and incredible kids, you know, that were super kids that were able to remember who they were and have an amazing time. And I was keeping it very generic, basically. Um, so what I wanted really was to create this so that I could reach out to parents, teachers, carers. So I, two years ago, I think it was two years ago, Susan, I ran 60 seconds of color, but I also included EFT into it as well, which is emotional freedom technique. And I taught these teachers and, and, and parents and carers how to do this with their children, okay? And it just kind of happened and that's what I did. And now two years later, last Monday, I got a light bulb moment and I get this quite often, these intuitions, where I actually thought maybe it's time that I actually did this again. Maybe it's time that I brought my 60 seconds, which is very little time, to children, to parents, to help them realise that in just a very short space of time, children and us can actually calm ourselves down and be present, okay, and connect with that power within. So the end of the presentation was, may your life be truly filled with colour. <laughs> and then I ran, there we are, uh, parents course. So let me stop sharing that. So, um, oh goodness, people, other people have joined while I've been off the screen. So, okay. On your picture area, click at the top as we can only see your face. Oh, so you couldn't see the slides at all. Could you see the slides? Oh, you could see the slides. Oh, I'm so glad because that would have been a, bit, <laughs> been a bit, bit silly. Otherwise, she would have just seen me talking. <laughs> I thought you could see them. So, yeah, so I wanted to um, present this to you because... I wanted to take you through a little bit, one of the processes that I was thinking about using with children. Now I have many, I have a toolbox of many processes um, with, turn the device whom didn't get the whole picture. Yes, exactly. Someone might've had their device, like phone or something, yeah. Um, so I wanted to try it out with you, is that okay? And um, one, one of the things that uh, I like to use is, a box full of stars okay so these stars you see them all different colors you can get these they are balloon uh what well, they're called weights balloon white weights yeah so um that's for the purpose of this we've never done it online before it's really funny so we've got our stars and the other thing that i use with kids is a magic wand okay so I've got this magic wand that's really cool. It's really sparkly. So if you do decide to, to um, you want your children or uh, the children you work with to do these, these um, evenings with me, then get them to make a magic wand or get them a make magic wand uh, to have. So they've got it so they can wave it. Yeah, they can make it. It's fine. And uh, get them some stars and if they can't get if you can't get these stars although you can in the UK you can get them for a couple of pounds um, from Amazon and you, you can get like a whole pack of 50 I think 20 or 50 I've got all sorts I've got clear I've got gold and silver so I've got all these different colored stars and depending on the age of your child like my daughter at 12 will not want to do these but little children love these things okay and if, it's, if you've got an older child, you might want to just do the process without the plastic stars and the magic wand, okay? But actually, they might like the magic wand. So essentially, I'm going to take you through the star in the ground, the star in the sky. And some of you know this, okay? But you know it from an adult perspective. So I'm going to do it as if you're all children, all right? So this will be fun. It's kind of nice because we've all got an inner child within us. And um, then afterwards, I'm going to ask you how you feel. So from the perspective of now, 
just think about how you feel. So, you know, imagine you were the child and you were looking at the outside world and you were wondering about what's going on in the outside world, okay? So just connect with a child that you think particularly, you know, you can see how they're feeling. And then just feel it within yourself, okay? And just kind of have a feel about it and feel, you know, how does it feel? Does it feel a little bit uncomfortable? Does it feel okay? Does it feel quite scary? Just you know how to connect with that, right? Okay. So then I want you just to put your hands on your heart. Okay. So just put your hands on your heart. Keep my eyes closed, open for, for a little bit. Put your hands on your heart. And so imagine that you are holding a star in your hands that you've you've got your box of stars and you've picked a color so just choose a color and imagine that you're holding that star so i'm going to hold what am i going to hold i'm going to have a, a silver one i'm going to hold a silver one to my heart okay and just feel into that and just breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth and make a puffy noise. <sighs> make a big puffy noise and imagine a cloud coming out of your mouth. Then breathe in a beautiful golden light and connect with your star that you're holding in your hands. And imagine all those sparkles blending with that colored star and the whole of your little body is lighting up. And then imagine that that star is underneath your feet. Imagine that colored star is underneath your feet. And imagine that colored star is above your head. So you've now got three stars, one above your head, one in your hands against your heart, and one underneath your feet. So you've got a star in the ground, a star in the sky, and a star in your heart. And I want you to feel that feeling that you had, that worry, that confusion, and feel where it is in your body. And I want you to imagine that that magic star could go down to that feeling and just sparkle it away. Can you do that? Just imagine that you're putting your star on that little bit of worry or fear or emotion, something that's worrying you at the moment or scaring you. Just put it on there and watch it disappear. Watch that feeling disappear. And then breathe in through your nose and do a really big puff out through your mouth and puff away any of those feelings that you don't want to feel anymore. Puff them away. And then when you're ready, you can open your eyes. <laughs> And you can put your star back in the box for another day. And then, of course, what I would do is I would connect with them to see how they feel. So it's just literally very short. I just want to um, ask somebody how they feel. So I'm going to go to Katie, actually, because I don't know Katie. So unmute yourself, Katie. Hello. Can you hear me? Hi, Katie. Nice to meet okay. you. Nice um, to meet you. Yes, nice to meet you. Um, so do you see the simplicity of that where, you know, depending on the age of the child, obviously I was, I was kind of working with a sort of a seven or eight year old then, you know, maybe slightly older and definitely younger, but it's so simple that they have the power to 
heal that part of them that they don't need to know where it comes from, but it's just how they're in their energy field. So what did you feel, Katie, about that? Yeah, it was actually kind of amazing to to actually feel how how deep some of these painful emotions can mm -hmm. feel and then that sparkling effect really sort of just lift it lift it out through the breath, that out breath. And then yeah, some, the puff, the puff of the puff works really well with kids. It's like just puff it out. Yeah. 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 And it's empowering. Like, wow, okay, yeah, I did this, you know. Yeah, no exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the fun and one of the fun things is choosing the star, you know. So so obviously if if, if I was in a physical group, it would be like one box and we'd pass it around like we did when Susan was on the course with me. But mm -hmm. um you could perhaps get that, you know, for children or make them, you know, we've got plenty of time on our hands, <laughs> make make some stars and put them in a box, you know. So it's it's kind of that's the first step. So that's the first thing. Thank you, Katie, for for sharing how you felt. And I'm just looking at, um, Lance has said, I wish I had this as a child. Ditto, Lancing, ditto. <laughs> but you know, we, we, we're in a new conscious parenting movement, which is great. And um, right, so um, Mina, 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 Mina. Mina's an EFT practitioner in a school. Mina. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I muted you. Could you unmute yourself again? Hi. Show yourself, Mina. Oh, I'm sitting up in bed. <laughs> oh, don't worry, don't worry. I don't want to put you on the spot or anything. I just wondered if you had realised your video wasn't on. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, my love. Don't worry. Yeah, so what, what did you... Um, oh, I thought that was brilliant. I've just worked with kids today online um, because obviously we're not in school. So uh, that's amazing. Amazing. They would totally uh, I know, right? And, and yet yeah, the to that. schools how come you're working as an EFT practitioner? Well I mean, when I, I was an EFT practitioner, schools were like, you just, know Yeah. yeah. It, I, I went in well, my daughters went there and um, they're no longer there. And I went in saying I would like once I trained, I said, Can I come in and just help out? Amazing. <laughs> they they were really open to it. So I spent about nine months just volunteering and yeah. I got some really good results so they were like yeah okay we'll we'll, we'll take you on <laughs> I mean I, I only work an afternoon a week yeah. but I have five children I work with and um, yeah. it's really good it's amazing yeah brilliant yeah. brilliant and whereabouts are you I'm in North London oh cool not far away yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's amazing Mina and um you know it might be that uh, one of the things that I was also thinking about was that, you know, I'm going to do another process uh, with you all now, which is really fun yeah. as well. But it's, you know, putting all these things together really for parents, teachers and carers that actually that you can use them in your practices and in, you know, mm. your home as well. And I think um, if we can really help children with this, I mean, my daughter, who's 12 now, but, um, you know, obviously has done this work and EFT work since she was tiny. Oh, um, yeah, she knows. I mean, she knows how to release, you know, yeah. if she feels sad, she, we, we quite often, um, I mean, I do quite a lot of uh, toning, so sound healing as well. Mm. Um, and, you know, she'll do that as well and allow me to do that. So I think it is really important that we've got a very simple thing that, yeah we don't have to call anything mm. and mindfulness is the tick box mm. because it's nice approved mm. right so it's our tick box into mainstream and that's one of the reasons why i trained in it because yeah they kind uh, of understand the mindfulness yeah exactly. package yeah um, but what is mindfulness it's just connecting, same really, thing really yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, and also uh, the, i like the idea that they kids don't really have to know why or where it's coming from just exactly releasing it. i think that's the key because you get so stuck Absolutely. in the story about it yeah yeah Thanks, as adults Mina. we're stuck very stuck in the story about it all yeah that's absolutely um, yeah yeah that's, Mina. yeah that's great thank you great great and so you know the other thing about that um it was a really good point mina made is that you know actually you would know from the color that they chose because you you know you obviously could can have the chart and so on and you can see the colors but they don't need to know 
you know, it's not necessary that, that they need to know where that came from. You might know what emotion is if you want to know. But I like to speak to children as that, you know how it feels when you've got that feeling inside of you and it feels like a hot, a hot ball or um, a ball of energy that's really stuck. And let's give it a colour. You know, what colour would you give it? Right. And that's another way to work with children. And that's why I call it colour energy clearing. So let's do it again. But this time I want you to imagine that you've got a magic wand. All right. And so I like this one because it's really sparkly and, you know, cute. But if you're working with a boy and perhaps an older boy, they might not want to use a sparkly one. So they might want to use something different. Ah, Linnell's got a sparkly wand. <laughs> she's got a, I know Wendy has, but she's not showing herself. So I know she's got a sparkly wand. Um, <clears throat> and actually Jennifer has as well, because Jennifer sent it to her. Jennifer Nito has got a sparkly wand. So these sparkly ones, it's really a symbol. And it's a symbol of saying, I have the magic within me to heal anything all right and clear anything so let's do it so, so imagine we have a, a sparkly wand okay and i want you just to feel into your body imagine that you know there's something that you're a bit worried about at the moment or you're fed up about or sad about i just want you to feel where it is in your body and so the language i would use would obviously be tailored to children but for you just like you know where does it feel does it feel tight does it feel heavy does it feel where, do, where does it what does it feel like in your body and just capture it for that moment okay and it's just a little bit of energy that we can magic away so i want you to imagine that you've got your magic wand and your magic wand is just so clever it holds all of the emotions of unconditional love. And when you tap your magic wand where that feeling is, it just instantly transforms into love. Isn't that cool? So I just want you all to get your magic wands and just tap where it might be. It might be in your head, it might be in your tummy, it might be in your back, it might be in your ear wherever it might be. And then take a deep breath in through your nose and puff it out. Okay. And then come back to me. And how does it feel? Is that ball of energy, <laughs> is that ball of energy, is that, you know, if you imagined you were a child, it's like you're feeling that maybe a pain in your tummy as well, some children. Um, I know that actually Laurie, uh, she works with some children and you've said to me before, Laurie, haven't you, that they, one of them has a pain or something sometimes in their tummy, yeah. And so you can actually speak about that, Laurie, if you want to and how that child might be feeling that emotion, Laurie, do you think? And he's holding it, isn't he? He's holding it in. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of yeah. anger that uh, goes on between the parents mm. and uh, a lot of disconnect. So yeah, mm. kids are really carrying it, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, so it shows us, doesn't it, if we can help those children realize that, um, you know, not as bad, not as good, because we don't want to kind of give it labels like that, but just that, it, oh my goodness, so it's just a bit of energy that you've got in your tummy, or it's just a bit of stuck energy, you know? And so by having the power that they feel they've got within them, they can just release that. Well, at least they can release it to a level, yeah? They can release it so that they feel better in that moment. And it might not, get to the deepest parts of where it's from. But in that moment, they feel they have all the power within them to release it. And I think, you know, I think that's key, isn't it? Really yep. key. Become the power, yep. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm just gonna go to, who wants to, Alexis. Can you unmute yourself, Alexis? 
<laughs> Lex, ah, oh no, I muted you. Sorry, gosh. I was trying to help, Alexis. Unmute now. yourself. <laughs> sorry, Alexis. Sorry. Um, no worries. Alexis, what did you feel? What did you I feel? I thought this was amazing. You know, I'm going to be honest. I do not have children and I don't work with children, but I just got on the call because I just love your work. And I'm oh, so Alexis. glad I did because you know what? I feel that it really benefited me. <laughs> honestly feel so much better. She sneaked in on the call. She sneaked in. No, 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 but it's great because you'll be able to, you know, share, share this with someone that you feel it would be really No, yes, for. I do. I, I have yeah. a niece and I plan to do it with her. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's great. I'm oh, good. Good. So that's really good so it just goes to show thank you alexis um it just goes to show doesn't it that we you know we are that child as well so we are you know um there's today is is never a today so you know if we're thinking of how we feel today that today is not because of today that today that now is because of the sum of the parts of before okay so our perceptions of belief things that have happened to us, things that we've been told, those experiences that we've held in a vibrational uh, set point within our field and within ourselves and within our body. And then we're just walking about the world and we are reflecting that back, okay? So then the world gives us that experience. But from a child's perspective, the language that I would use would be very simple and very easy to understand and there's another process that i really like and that i do with my kids quite often as well actually or when they allow me to but essentially um this one's really cool and i call it the emotional wall now i want you to do this from um and it's not like i do it with you guys if you've, you've done it with me before it's slightly different for kids so i'm going to do it from a child's perspective how i would work with a child and uh it's going to be really fun Okay, so I want you to think about something that you perhaps, you know, find difficult at the moment. It might be the same as the last thing, whatever it might be. Okay, so I want you to know that that's just an emotion that's held within you. But now I want you to imagine that there was a wall or a fence or something right in front of you. Can you see it? Okay, and now I want you to imagine that you're standing in front of the wall, but that right behind you, your favorite superhero or your favorite angel or your favorite fairy or your favorite character is right with you, standing right behind you and putting their arms around you to keep you safe. And they're also putting on this special cloak. It's like a cape and it's a cape of protection. Can you feel it? And as you put on your cape of protection, you have a look at the wall and how does it feel? Perhaps it doesn't feel quite so scary as it did before. And can you imagine what's on the other side of the wall? Have a think. Can you see what's on the other side of the wall? Can you imagine what's on the other side of the wall? And then I want you to feel that your special person that's with you, it could be your superhero, it could be an angel, it could be a fairy, whatever it is for you, it could be a lovely big teddy bear, whatever it is. I want you to imagine that that special, special person is giving you a beautiful star and this star is a bit like the star we used earlier but this star is full of love it's full of love and you can just place it in your heart and know that you're always safe and you're always loved and now have a look at your wall is it still there can you see what's in front of you? If it's still there, get your magic wand, because you know you've got your magic wand. Pick your magic wand up and disappear that wall. Remember, you've got your superheroes with you, 
they can help you and you can just disappear that wall. And then I want you to walk right forward where the wall was and into your special scene. And how does it feel? Take a deep breath. Are you standing in a magical land? Are you standing in the fields? Are you standing on the clouds? Do you see a rainbow and stars? How does it feel? And then I want you to open your eyes and see yourself standing there with that cape on, with your magic wand, that star in your heart. And I want you to imagine something that you'd like to be when you grow up. What would you like to be when you grow up? Imagine what the best thing would be if you could be anything you wanted to be. And I want you to imagine that you can feel that in your tummy, in your heart, that you are that, that you're being that. And imagine how happy you are, put a big smile on your face. Imagine how you'd feel when you're grown up and you are being that. And then I want you to imagine that you could bring that picture into your heart now. You can imagine you could just scoop it up in the sky and bring it into your heart. Take a breath, wave your magic wand, magic it there and open your eyes. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and then I'd speak to the children and say, what did you create? So I'm going to speak to, um, I'm going to speak to Lansing. <laughs> Lansing, I'm going to speak to you. What did you create? And then I'm going to speak to Michelle. What did you create? I had a really hard time getting that wall to disappear. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> But so, children, children do it just like that. Yeah, they do it just like that. But mine yeah. was like putting the wand, the wand, the wand, it's like yeah. go away. It it's became okay. very, it became transparent. Oh, that's good. But mm -hmm. I couldn't get to the other side very well. Yeah. So, what did more you work see? to do. <laughs> yeah. What did you see on the other side? It was like really beautiful hills and valleys yeah. and Brilliant. trees and, and, you know, grass and yeah. water. And it was really nice. It's just... You know, I, I think I just need more help getting over there and then kind of picturing what I wanted to be when I grew up. Yeah. It was hard too. So. But you've got to remember that you're, you know, that we as adults have got many of those children that have played, you know, our own inner children. That's yeah. Right. When I'm working with children, it's so quick and so yeah. simple. And I'll yeah. give you, I'll, I'll give you an, um, an example. I'll give you one. Thank you, Lansing. Sure. <laughs> I'll, I'll, um, I'm going to go to Michelle in a second. I'll open you, Michelle, actually. Um, I worked with a, a young girl, uh, and her mum lets me talk about her. I worked with a young girl a couple of years ago. And I actually worked with her in a school. So her mum uh, got me to work with her while she was actually at school. So I visited the school, and I did some work with her. And she did a few processes. She did one, which is what I'm going to talk to you about. Essentially, she saw herself winning a medal for, to be a swimmer. She always wanted to be um, an Olympic swimmer, always. Okay. And she'd had a really difficult time. Her nan had died and her mum was a single parent. And she was really struggling with it all. So I did some work with her. And uh, one of the things we did after we back with healing the emotions we got her to visualize herself winning standing on a podium and winning a medal okay as a swimmer and this was when she was you know she was quite a bit younger <laughs> her mother tells me to this day and she still lets me know how many medals she's won being a swimmer 
and it's just constant you know she lets me know she says oh can you believe it like she won this she you know she's doing so well she's swum for england now you know and it's and and so just these seeds that we plant and the bit of healing that we need to do at this age you know when they're young is really really key for them to have these visions and she actually did draw in one of the sessions she drew a picture of herself on this podium and stuck it on her bedroom wall and that is exactly what happened you know she stood on the podium received the medal and you know it's just absolutely amazing isn't it what 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 we can do when we really help our, our kids to realize that they can be anything michelle can you open your your um and mute <laughs> Thanks, love. Hiya. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm. How did you get on with that? What did you... Um... Hi. Hi. This, this is Hello. Talia. Hi, Talia. Hello. So did you, do, did you do the process, Talia? No, I didn't. I just came... Mum came in a little bit late. So oh. I, so she, I came in another room and then um, Talia was here and I got a bit distracted. So I didn't really do the process fully. But I just... Yeah saw myself as a princess through the in the wall but, um, mm. but but the first process um i felt it in my tummy and then i got really like a lovely warm feeling in my body yeah 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 weird. so talia do you think that um this kind of processes and these kind of visualizations and that do you think that's something that you would do with your mom yeah, probably yeah, yeah, you might do it, yeah. And how old are you? 14. Yeah, so you're 14, brilliant, yeah. So, you know, you might, I might change the language around that, but, you know, I might not speak to you like a little tiny child. <laughs> but to be honest, actually, you know, you have all worked really well with the language for being a child, and that's because there's that child part of us, there's that three-year-old in us, there's that four-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old in us that actually is really wanting to be a child <laughs> yeah and wanting to be spoken to like a child so you know it's often often really needed um one of the other things that i find really helpful um which i may or may not do i get guided really about what what i'm going to do um when i work with children but one of the other things is really to acknowledge emotion and um to acknowledge with children that it's okay to feel something okay so we come from the generation of where you know boys can't didn't cry or they had to just kind of get on with it you know and and girls were allowed to cry so we now have a generation uh, of men this sort of age group that don't show their emotions too much and so what we're bringing up hopefully is men that can show their emotions that that can be okay with with being emotional and really feeling it because if we block that in ourselves we're a bit like a pressure cooker so this pressure cooker has to go somewhere and quite often it it, it happens um, and the body will show that message okay so what i tend to do is it's 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 giving compassion and acknowledging the emotion so for example if um if someone's feeling angry so i'm going to give you an example of my son actually 11 years old and, and i'm laughing because it actually did happen <laughs> so um last night <laughs> perfect timing right uh he got really cross with sarah so martin is my 11 year old and sarah is my 12 and a half year old so she's just started secondary school so um he got really cross with sarah and so um they're only 16 months apart so they're very close but it's like a love-hate relationship and uh she wound him up and she just kept winding him up winding him up winding him up and in the end he got to the point where even though i tried to stop her he actually got really cross with her and ended up hitting her right so of course obviously we, it's not something that you know i want any children to do but so eventually once they calmed down i sat with him and i said i know that you felt really, really angry then. I know you did. I know you felt really angry, but it's never okay to hit someone, yeah? And so I said, I know that inside you had that bit of anger that you couldn't express and you then hit Sarah. And I said, that just really, really upset her. And so I said, how do you think she feels that her brother came to her and really hit her with his anger? 
well, I don't know, <laughs> he said. And I said, well, you do know. And he said, well, probably sad. <laughs> and I said, yeah, she feels really sad. And then I said, so do you think it might be nice for you to say sorry to her? <laughs> right? So can you imagine the scene, right? Yeah. So um, he said, no, I'm not saying sorry to her. <laughs> right? So then we had this to and fro conversation. But all the time I'm saying to him, well, how do you really feel inside? Because you know that hitting someone isn't a kind thing to do. And he was like, mm. I said, do you think that you can go to sleep knowing that you haven't said sorry to her? Mm. <laughs> so I had all of this. And in the end, a couple of moments later, after I just walked about, I said, well, you have a think about it. And I'll just go into the bathroom and I'll come back. Anyway, so I came back and I said to him, so how do you feel now? And he said, I'm going to say sorry. And I said, why? And he said, because I've got a feeling in my tummy, I don't like it. And I said, yeah. And that's because you know, that's not okay to hurt someone. So I said, that's brilliant. I said, come on, let's go and say sorry to Sarah together. And then they were like laughing and hugging each other. And it was all back to like nothing had ever happened. But do you see how it was? If I'd have made him wrong, if I'd have said to him, you know, go to your room or, you know, do whatever, then imagine that, you know, hey, listen, I'm not perfect. Let me tell you, I'm not perfect. But I do know how to help children with emotions. And I 100% know that the way to deal with it is not to make him wrong for what he did, because then he would just close down and we wouldn't have had the result we had. OK, so it's just thinking about that and thinking about, you know, ways of being able to say that definitely it's not right to hit someone. It's definitely not right. You know, if someone throws a chair or, you know, it probably happens in schools, you know, where kids get really angry and throw things and, you know, and it's never OK. But it's also OK to feel those angers and those feelings and those emotions and those sadness and all of those emotions. And I think that's really key. So what I really wanted was for, you know, children to have maybe half an hour a week. And I don't know, I'm just going to trial it for a few weeks if people are open to it. But half an hour for a few weeks where they could just come to a space where they felt they could just be for half an hour, forget about what's happening in the world and just have a bit of fun with a bit of magic and a bit of releasing um, and, and just to hold a, a safe space. And to be honest, it can be anything. I'm not really going to plan it too much. I'm just going to go with the, the, the ages of the children that come and just work with that and give them a voice. So to give them all a voice at the start, and all a voice at the end. So, you know, how, do, how does that feel? Can I hear from everyone? Can I hear from Susan about, Susan, how do you feel about it? Um, I think it's, it's really key. I think you're spot on, you know, I think it, we really, really need to do this. Um, I think my only slight reservation is, I'm just thinking my 11 year old, he's my youngest, he's kind of too cool for school, do you know what yeah, I mean? He's Martin. a bit like, mm -hmm. would not be seen dead doing yeah, anything yeah. Same. um yeah so i don't know how he will respond but he's the one who needs it he has real mm. sort of anger yeah and i've been trying to teach him you know you can't control um others but you can control how you respond to them do you know what i mean because he's got mm. friends who are being unpleasant um so it, it's giving him techniques you know techniques yeah so i mean i i mean obviously you know about eft but if you if you you know, when you do the bedtime thing, because they're still really young at 11. I mean, Martin's still a baby, really. I mean, he's 11 and he wants to be, have a six pack and do boxing and stuff. But he's still mummy's, quite a mummy's boy. So I, I would say in those moments, you could say something like, God, I know it's really hard when you, you know, when you hear those words. And I'm really, it's really hard when people are unkind to you. You know, I know it's really hard because you can't fix it, Susan. No. But what you can do is, you know, like we would do like in a, in a child session, mm. we might say, I'm so sorry that, you know, you felt you got, you say we've got our six year old in front of us and we're working with a six year old self. And we say, I'm so sorry that you didn't get heard. I'm so sorry that but you might not say it like that to your child. You might just say, I know it's really hard. So you just find the language 
but not to fix it because you can't fix it. But by just acknowledging the emotion, it might just be enough. Mm. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Even if it's just like, you know, we're not perfect, Susan, as parents, you know, we just, but just no. acknowledging. And sometimes it's harder when like you're a, t- you know, you're a trained teacher and I'm a trained therapist. And, you know, it's like, sometimes it's harder in a way because you know how to be with other children. But if when it's your own child, mm. the emotions are there as well. Yeah. Because yeah. you obviously yeah. don't want to see your child angry and sad so no no of course not so yeah try that try you know kind of saying to him um yeah i know it's really hard i I can see that you feel really upset when when you hear those words or i can i can see it's really unkind when someone says things like that isn't it and he's very he's very empathetic and so yeah you know he he actually he, he really takes on everyone's emotions and he's you know so say that yeah so yeah, we just we, we, like you i take yeah. on everyone's emotions and yeah. i know how it feels but you know what you can just let them go because they're not really yours and i have to say you know obviously i'm very grateful because i've been doing all this work with you and and that's been just helping so much because mm. i can give those little tidbits to the kids and just say yeah you know just let it go let it go <laughs> you know yeah so what do you think? So do, what sort of age group do you think? And do you think the other, the other question I was going to ask as well, and this is for everyone, I'm going to ask everybody. The other question was, do you think half an hour with the kids and then the rest with the parents or teachers or whoever, so that because you need, you need the support as well, right? So just to kind of, I can then feed back what I, how I feel the children are and then maybe do some, it's just a thought, but I was talking to Wendy about it um and maybe it's sort of like a double whammy then you know like the children get some help but then you do as well so i think that's it it's key isn't it that if, if we mm. have the techniques we can carry on the processes yeah at home and and be doing it all the time i mean my my slight not issue but you know i've got a 17 year old who was meant to be doing her a levels they've been cancelled all that emotional stuff going on yeah. Um, and then, you know, the younger one as well. The middle one seems okay at the moment. Mm. One out of three is not bad. But um, well, the seventeen-year-old can definitely do some work. You know, she she's old enough to you know do her own definitely her own work if she wants to do that. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, she's definitely. I've worked with loads of that sort of age group. I love it actually. So yeah, have a think about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, so you're so so the outcome for you is that you think that do you think it's a younger age group? Do you think? Um, I might struggle to persuade my eleven year old mm. to take part. I think he'd mm. watch it on the re- on, he'd watch the replay. Great. So I could do it that way mm-hmm. for sure. But I, yeah. I I think he would just would not. And he might watch the replay for a week, and then yeah. he might want to be part of it. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. because he'd get a chance to say something. He'd get a chance to, you know, say how he feels. Yeah. And sometimes, Susan, when it's not mum, you know, when it's somebody else, and obviously I've got many years experience working with kids. Yeah. um, You know, it, you know, it might just be that little bit that he needs just to feel like, because I'm very grounded and I'm very, you know, kind of easygoing and have a bit of fun with it so it's not too serious and I think that's key as well yeah I mean he's but he is open he's very open yeah. you know he's very well, spiritual um but I think it's, it's that he gets embarrassed he's yeah that that's age. okay well, well he could maybe he could do you know if we decide to do this and it feels like a good thing then maybe he can do the first week on replay mm-hmm. or we can yeah. have his video off yeah <laughs> yeah, absolutely don't talk to him <laughs> yeah yeah exactly uh, yeah yeah <laughs> thanks Susan um Katie what do you what do you what do you feel about it as as a professional and as is are you a parent as well yes yeah, yeah. So, so, I think yeah. They oh yeah of course you said yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 
I think for my girls would love to join when I think about this and like incorporating it into my practice with high level trauma and children, their imagination is kind of gone. So trying to figure out how yeah. to bring that back in without the resistance is my larger like question, you know? Yeah, I know. Oh, that's a great question for me. I love that. So I remember when I worked in child protection years and years and years ago, I wish I knew these processes then you know like hey it's just meant to be that way but I used to use um secretly because in child protection you have to follow the red tape but secretly when I used to work with children I would bring animal cards with me Michelle will love this animal cards that were um during virtue ones and so I took out all the ones with angels in and I just had them where they were like little animals or unicorns and I used to get them out and I would talk to them about how that rabbit would feel. I wonder how that rabbit's feeling. Hmm. You know, that kind of thing. I wonder how that horse is feeling, you know? So it was like, you know, like play therapy in a way, but actually doing it that way. So I would, I would, I would never write this up. So I'd never write it up in my report, but I would just do it with the children secretly. And what I found was that even the most traumatized children, sexually abused, drugs, alcohol, you know, watching parents shoot up in the corner, all that stuff, they were able to understand how an animal would feel. And so mm. that's just an invite to you um, because yeah. you have private practice, don't you? I do that as well. Brilliant. Yeah. So you don't have to go down all the red tape. So basically you can have that creative flow going. And um, there are many, you know, many, many things that I used to do with children and, and really not to see it like they're really traumatized, but just see it that they experienced some stuff where they shut down their heart because they didn't feel yeah. safe and they gave up on feeling, feeling connected to source, feeling connected to their inner guidance when they always were. So just, you know, that, that would be what I would do with them and, 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 and just see it like actually that they can heal you know yeah. and uh, just little tiny steps you know but animals work really well and, and I often find and especially the children of today they are probably wiser than we are yeah and they're probably yeah. they probably know so much more than we do and we've just got to remind them of that yeah mm -hmm. yeah so so do you like the idea of the children and then the adults do you like the idea of just the children do you like the idea of just the adults <laughs> whatever you know what 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 floats you what do you get excited about yeah i definitely think that parent engagement is is critical and key to success i was thinking about it more like a 40 20 split so 40 with the kids to give them time to engage and then like a debrief they, with the I, I suppose the thing is is you know yeah. how how would they yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah ah susan yeah an animal rather than a superhero exactly um so yeah so i mean i in my experience with you too working with children i find i find like from start to finish half an hour would be long enough right because they just don't engage that long they just they they get it really quickly they release it really quickly it's just in my experience and then they're ready to go on to the next thing right and and especially doing it like this they're getting used to it now presumably because they're having to do lots of things like this but i i i think half an hour and then maybe 40 minutes for adults i'm fine to do 40 minutes for adults it's just that i'm thinking of the children first and how long they can engage for yeah i think 40 minutes would be too long too long you know, holding, holding the space for a group of children for the 40 minutes is quite a long time. <laughs> yeah, individually different. But I think, I, I think, you know, to start with maybe half an hour. Yeah. Sure. yeah. But do you think first or do you think, because Lanelle was saying she thinks parents first and then children. But I, I wonder if it's the other way around, just because we could then feedback and I could say, oh, you know what, it was really interesting. There was a theme, you know, uh, going on. That's what I was really thinking about. What do you think, Katie? Yeah, I definitely think um, kids first and then parents, just so that there's any questions that come up through yeah. it. 
give time and space to talk about that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, brilliant, Katie. Thank you for your input. Yeah. And um, yeah. yeah, it's great to see you. Okay. I'm going to go to uh, Laurie now. Laurie, what do you think, Laurie? Do you think the children, do you think you'd be able to get mum to agree to the children to do it? No, that's a shame. I wish. Oh my gosh, do I mm. ever wish. Not even if you told her that I was like a mindfulness teacher or something or psychologist or no, no. no. Okay. I've approached her about other uh, mm. things, you know, to the, and I got, you know, nowhere to her. This would be like radical. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Okay. Shame. Mm -hmm. It really is. Um, yeah. Yeah. Shame. Well, you know, maybe, uh, you can do the processes with them <laughs> when you're looking after them. <laughs> yeah. But what do you think, Laurie? So from your perspective, do you think it's better to have like some time with the kids and then feedback to the adults? And yeah. Yeah. I, I, first of all, I just love the whole thing, but yeah, I definitely think the kids first. And I think too, then you have kids that are more relaxed Yeah. and uh, you know, so then it's easier for the parents to, um, yeah. you know, to focus and um, yeah, you know, be able to fully participate, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I just love it. Okay, Mina. Yeah, Mina's just saying bye. Thanks, Mina, so much. Yeah, you'll get the replay later when once we end the call, it all gets sent out to you. So thank you so much for being here. And please um, email me your thoughts afterwards. Thanks, my love. Okay, yeah. Thanks, Laurie. Thank you. I'm going to go to Lorraine now, actually. Hi, Lorraine. <laughs> I can't unmute you. You have to unmute yourself. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, there. Can you hear me? Hey. Yeah. Yes. Hello. Hi. What did you think? Oh, I think it's lovely. I really do. And I've got three girls that would benefit from it. But I, I just <laughs> don't know that they would participate. You know. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know yeah. my story. Yeah. And... I see what you're doing and I'm like, oh my God, it, it would just benefit them so much. Mm. But I do agree. I think children first and then, then yeah. parents because I, yeah. I, you know, but they're just fabulous processes. You know, I think Ruby might be open to it. She's my youngest. She might, mightn't she? Yeah. Um, mm. But I think it will be that, you know, I heard what Susan said. It's that initial, the embarrassment of being on, a group thing mm. Um, mm. and maybe not wanting to put herself Speak. forward mm. but yeah uh, it was fabulous I was thinking about doing it that um, unless anyone wanted any of the children wanted to say hi but that what how I was going to do it was all of a sudden um, unmute everybody and say everybody can just say hi yeah so you know when we all start everyone can just say hi if they want to and if they don't want to they don't have to and then i just mute everyone again and i thought that might be a really good way to get people just to speak and then at the end of it um everyone can just kind of say bye to each other so they and then i i was thinking as the relationship grew they might want to say oh you know i've hi or you know yeah this is my name or whatever you know i think i think it's it's like adults though you know we some people find it really hard to be in groups and other people find it easier to be in groups so. yeah i agree and um you know uh, yeah i see it's interesting for me because ruby's actually quite you know when i do my live feed she'll be there in the background she will and she but, knows so, me, so she might, she might go for it. She might go yeah, for it. Yeah, I'm mm. going to have to have a real talk because I think she would really, well, I, like I said, all of them would benefit from it. Yeah. But the two older ones are going to be like, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks, my love. Yeah. Right, Brilliant. Then. Thanks, Lorraine. Thanks for being here. Okay. So I'm going to go to Jennifer. Jennifer? Jennifer? Can you unmute yourself, Jennifer? <laughs> if she's there. You know, Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer? Uh, if not, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to Tina. Tina? Hello, Tina. <laughs> Is everyone gone? 
Tina, can you hear me? <laughs> oh no, no one's home. Okay, I'm going to go to who's iPhone two? Who's iPhone two? It's me, it's Maria. Oh, Maria, hello. It's iPhone two. <laughs> I didn't think you were called that. Oh, Hi, no, Maria. You know Hi. Hi. Hi, Hi, Mrs. Starch. I'm sorry. So if you just quickly fill me in um, about what is it you're trying to do, because my son would be interested. So we would. Oh, I probably can't go through the whole oh, lot right, now because okay. um, we started an hour and 20 minutes oh, ago. Of course. But it's all right. But um, the, the, the main plan is to help Perhaps. children yeah. to feel a sense of empowerment and release any worries or fears yeah. that they might have. And, yes. and I suppose, when did you join? What part did you join? Oh, um, I'm probably only on half an hour right now because I just... Oh, yeah, but you've been, you've been on half an hour, which is great. Yeah. So did you yeah. do any of the processes? I was just listening in to um, when you were describing to the lady with the daughter um, about the feelings and, and I was listening in. I kind, of, oh, okay. I kind of, I'm a teacher, so I kind of teach a lot of that stuff. But, oh, um, fabulous. Yeah. yeah. Really so the processes, I really want you to experience them. So we did those yeah. earlier um, yeah. and I explained all, you know, my background and stuff. But how yeah. do you think, do you think it's better to work with the children first and then the adults on, on, on a call? So to do some time with the children and then some time feeding back with the adults. Do you think that's it? Well, I think it's children first because then you can get mm -hmm. to know them and what it is mm -hmm. they actually need and want yeah. and what they think it's about. And and um, sometimes when you're talking the other way around, it's like adults are telling you what the kids need, but really the kids need to open up and express it themselves, you know? Mm. That's the way I, mean, I we work. won't We won't be doing a lot of talking. So the okay, point yeah. is that, yes, you missed all of that, but basically yeah. um, what I was doing was helping Susan with just some, just some ideas really for her at home. Yeah. But essentially yeah, yeah. what I'll be doing is a specific processes that I've created where um, they yeah. can really get to the, the, the aspects of a child that releases that part of them that felt that they had no power, essentially. So, yeah. so it's through um, energy processes and different, yes. I've got all sorts of things like stars and magic wands and stuff, but definitely go back over and, and watch it and do the processes because oh, well, I'd love yeah. to hear what yeah. you felt about it. Um, yeah. But I originally yeah. created this to work in schools, to, to use it in schools. So it is originally created. There's a slideshow that you missed at the start um, where you could see what my oh, thinking yeah, was behind to. it. Yeah, but I'm glad you're here anyway. It's really good that you're here. Yeah, yeah so thank you so much. Thanks, yeah. Maria. Thank you. Thank you, my love. Thank okay, so I'm going to go to... Is Tina back? She might not be tapped. Wendy. Wendy? Yeah. Hi, Hi. Wendy. Hi. Hi, darling. What did you think? Oh, I thought that was really, really good. Um, was Max doing it with you? Was he there? No, we, I, he, was, he wasn't listening in yet. <laughs> yeah. But, was, um, but we ordered our stars and then we have our wands. So we're uh, ready for for our next it. session mm -hmm. yeah and and we've been working on like letting go of emotions too so yeah um, good max we, is three we, by the way so this is wendy and uh max is <laughs> max is three and uh he's very used to me so he, he sees me he sees me online quite a lot um so he knows me so i, th I think he probably will respond but he's very young so we just give yeah. him that opportunity to come in and out you know, what, whatever he wants to do, he can come in and out. But, you know, my main idea was really school, school aged children, but that doesn't mean that little children can't join. And I think that's really key as well. So if children have got siblings, it's fine for them to be there as well. You know? Mm. Yeah. I, like when I was a first grade teacher, um, they like doing stuff like that. And their attention span was like six minutes. Yeah. So whatever we <laughs> wanted to do or teach or learn, it had to be within that short time span yeah. because then I would lose them, you know, cause they can't hold on to listening in. So, yeah. so I think kids yeah. first would be great. And then yeah. uh, parents after to yeah. see like what they experience and how mm -hmm. to deal with certain things that happen, you know, yeah. for their child. And if they have any questions, we can do that after. I yeah. think that that would be ideal. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks my love. Thank you. Thanks Wendy. 
Okay, um, so I'm going to go to Lenau. And anyone else I haven't been to, I'm going to go to Lenau. Can you unmute yourself? It I don't know why me. I can't unmute you at the moment. It asked no, me. It asked me if I it wanted to. It asked you. Um, <laughs> what do you think, Lenau? What do you think about the whole the processes? And do you think that it's a good well, idea? I love them. I can't yeah. wait to get them out into the program. This is that's. <laughs> I mean, you remember almost the first things I ever said because you asked me while I was starting to heal, what are you going to do with this? How are you going to get this in motion? And I said, I need to be there for the kids. I need these kids to know yeah. that they're yeah. okay. Yeah. Being different. Because and that's so, what is coming up is the different. That is the new, new. And we yeah. have to get rid of the old so that the new isn't considered an oddball out. They need to know that. Yeah. They are so important. And yeah. do you think that, do you think that, I know your kids, you've grown up, haven't they? So do you yeah. think, do you think that it would be helpful? It's just something that's coming to me. Do you think it would be helpful for me to run it as not this one, but another one that would be a professional for, for professionals to use? I think, I think it's great because it needs, it needs to get out and it needs to, uh, it needs to start spreading. Yeah. Um, and you have a talent <laughs> that's uh, changed my life. Changed oh, my life. She. So I always I cry with you, and I'm doing so much better with the tears, except when you. <laughs> um, it's just, you just get right in there, and it's, it's so important. You know, now I'm, I ask all the time, I, I can't tell you how many emails I sent out in the beginning of this with people that were working with kids and I said ah teach me what you were teaching so that I can teach it too and mm. and that was two years ago and now here we are and it was uh, yeah and it's funny I isn't it wait. how the the alignment you know the universe Everything. is ready universal alignment you know it's ready um and I think maybe you know it's all about a great awakening really yeah yeah okay thanks my darling I seem to be oh oh sorry sorry I seem to be able to mute people, but not unmute them. I How said, weird. I said, I, I'm kind of on the two-year plan, so I've just accepted it. <laughs> two-year plan. <laughs> Thanks, darling. That's great. Okay. So I'm going to go to Alexis and then Michelle. And then... Hi. Hi, Alexis. Hi, yeah. So, oh, yeah, you've said, oh, yeah, you've put a message here, haven't you? I can't thank you enough. Also, listen to the replay. Five-year-old niece. Yeah, okay. So, so what did you think about it from the perspective? Sorry, my phone's vibrating. What did you think from the perspective of, you know, children, like a, 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 an evening perhaps with children first and then um, adults afterwards? Or what do you feel? Do you think a professional course as well? Or what do you feel? I'm just really, you know, Wendy... Wendy and I discuss this and I just, I'm just someone who shows up. Like if, if you, I can create anything. So if you want a professional course as well, I'll put one together, maybe not be this week, but you know, soon. And I can put that together and maybe it can be, you know, two days or two mornings or two afternoons or whatever it is. Yeah. Online, of course. Yeah. I think it's the greatest idea because honestly, kids really, our lives would be different if we knew tools like that. Yeah, you know, instead same. of like using, like learning math, I remember all the fractions I did in school. I've never once used them, by the way, in my whole adult life. But if I had had tools like this just to like calm me down, mm. and if it's working on me as an adult, yeah, imagine like what it's going to do for little kids. It's so quick for kids. It's just so yeah. incredibly fast. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like so incredibly other, There was fast. another lady you were asking about her wall, and she said, oh, it took me a while to get it down. Sorry, you can probably hear my loud budgie in the in the background. Ah, uh, I've um, got budgies. I've yeah, got I know, budgies. I know you yeah. do. Mm. Um, um, it was the same with me. You know, that yeah. wall was there, and it took a long time. So, mm. yeah, you know, if kids learn this, the world would just be a better place. So, I have a, another program called Sparkle to Success, um, which people can have a look at on my website. And Sparkle to Success is really getting to the deep parts of the childhood aspects and trauma and all the processes you can do, which I used to run physically live three days. But I'm what I'm what I'm feeling about this is um, 
I'm feeling sparkle to success, but I'm also feeling um, a professional 60 seconds of color, maybe, or something like that for professionals uh, to use in their practice. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll incorporate some of it. Let me just, yeah, let me just really kind of put it out there. I was really disappointed mm. when you said the schools didn't like, they said no to you. And I thought, wow. But you know what? It, it, it doesn't matter because it was meant to be, you know, obviously yeah. I created it two years ago and I can create it in a different way now that will work for, for professionals now rather than, rather than how it might've been then. So I always believe that it's always about perfect timing, but yeah, thank you so much for that. I really, really appreciate. Um, and just your quickly, um, I just want to convey the same thing. The last lady said, you really do have a talent. So thank you so much. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's all the years I think of working uh, in this field. Yeah, it just becomes second nature to me. Thank you. Thanks, my love. Okay, um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to Michelle, actually. Michelle, any, anything you can add to that that you feel would be helpful or you might need to? Am I, am, am I muted? Yeah, you're muted, yeah. Oh, right. Um, I definitely feel um, deal with the, deal with the children first. Um, mm. Let them have a bit of fun, and then they're mm. distracted, and then you can talk to the parents. Um, yeah. From my experience, thank you, Talia. Um, for my four children, I do feel that um, teachers maybe could do with some professional help. Not all teachers, mm. but all my four children said their teachers always shouted at them, and. Yeah. And that's really does, I, does, I believe that does affect them. Yeah. And um, I think now, now when they go back to school, the teachers are going to be really stressed as well. And, and also yeah. a lot of the time when they shout out, they don't understand what they've done wrong. So of I course not. No, because yeah. once again, if you go back to the, to the slides where, you know, stressed teachers, well, that's the stressed child in the teacher coming out right mm -hmm. so if that part of you is not um sorry it's my, oh no, it's my daughter <laughs> um why well, she has to phone me on my mobile phone when i'm in the same house i'm not too sure but anyway. <laughs> um <laughs> it's quite funny uh but but so yeah so when they so when we are stressed then of course the way we deal with problems and the stress of perhaps red tape, you know, performance, performance related pay, whoever decided that, ridiculous for teachers. And so, you know, when we're thinking of that stress, then it's going to be given to the children and it's definitely not the children's fault. So that was my key of doing this whole training program two years ago was to bring it in and do it with teachers. So they could then do it with the children. But my plan was the, the teachers would get the help. That was my key. That was my point of doing it. And it all came from Michelle, the school that my children used to go to. And the head was a woman and she was someone who, because I worked in child protection for so long, she was someone who I was really concerned about. And I was really concerned about the words she used to say to children, the way she responded to them. And how teachers would go into that school and within six months they'd be out. So there was like a revolving door of teachers going in. So children never had that safety and security and that continuity of care. And what I noticed was the way that this head ran it was like, um, I don't know if you know the musical um, Matilda. Mm, uh, yes. How <laughs> Miss Trunchbull. And we used to <laughs> laugh about it, and, but it wasn't funny because actually it was a really, this was an idyllic primary school. I won't mention it, obviously, confidentiality, but it was an idyllic, tiny primary school in the UK. And everyone thought that it was this village school. And do you know what? It was absolutely awful. And that was good in a way, not good for the kids, but good because that was the key for me. And I was like, no more. I have to create something so that this never happens again. Yeah. So maybe it's time, you know, I don't fight anything. You know me, Michelle, I don't, I don't fight anything. I hold the space for change and I hold the space for people being able to heal themselves. And if that happens by helping teachers, then whoopee, you know, because <laughs> they are us and we are them, right? So the more that we can help them, the better it is for our kids, the better it is for them. So 
yeah absolutely and and um you know we can take the feeling of needing to control the world and bring it into feeling that we have all the empowerment within us right. yeah so um do you feel do you feel you know talia said she she'd be happy to do it she can help me run it <laughs> no she's no you can receive talia and um i can see her running something like this actually sorry i'm just getting some intuition <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> this is what happens with me um those of you that she's, don't she's know, know me she, she's actually amazing yeah, yeah i can see her running some. so basically um what i'm getting from this is that people feel it's a good idea and we can give it a go and then um for me to put a professional course together as well and i think i might incorporate sparkle to success and 60 seconds and 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 uh, tune in with what how i'm going to do that but the best bits of both to bring it in so that it can be in a professional setting i think that's that's what i'll do with that um yeah thanks michelle <laughs> so yeah thanks darling for being here bringing your energy um oh katie said i would definitely love a professional course yeah um systematic questions of implementing for adoles adolescence yeah i mean with adolescence i found um, a huge amount of self-harming, um, Katie, that, that's happened. I've noticed, I'll unmute you for a sec. So I've, I've noticed, I can't unmute you. <laughs> um, self-harming, um, self-worth yeah. issues, pressure around mm -hmm. what is, what am I going to be in the world? Um, sort of pressure to perform, um, having to do so much work. And I find that, you know, and there's also, I don't know if you know about this, but, um, you know we are this energetic experience in the world and so if we if we are in fear and if we have got things like self-harming then quite often what goes with that is that we've attracted along the way some um thought forms that aren't ours or some negative energies that aren't ours that drive yeah. behavior okay and so it, it's that as well that the more we are able to come into that place of love for ourselves the less we get affected by thought forms or, or, or negative energies around us and so um i remember my daughter when she was at this primary school and she said to me why has that lady got a cloud over her head right yeah. and so she mm -hmm. could see the energy I and mean, when she sees energy anyway but she could see the energy over this head teacher and was scared stiff by her because she was holding all this dark energy and so what i find with self-harming so just just one thing that's coming to me for you katie is with self-harming i've often found that they have um attachments with them that sort of like dark energies that they brought along the way and that comes from fear or shock or trauma where the energetic field the auric field has allowed in an energy and i don't talk about that with everybody but i think you can hear it and i and i have found that when they start to really release the fear and trauma they become uh, much more self-assured and then all that kind of cloud goes because it's no longer attracted to the energy you know so for example like attracts like yeah so um the other aspects that i find yeah. with as adolescents as well i'm just kind of um tuning in about it so the other things are is that they yeah thank you they, they just want to be loved so they then perhaps sometimes want to be loved so they go and you know have sex with um underage with you know a boy or a man and that's because they just want that love so that's another thing that that i find seems to be happening quite a lot with with teenagers and you probably notice this as well and and so maybe teenage pregnancies maybe you know or maybe just putting themselves in dangerous positions yeah to be loved so yeah so th i mean yeah. sex trafficking yeah. yeah i mean i spent um several years uh working with trafficked children mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, I can bring that experience to my, my, my work as well. But yeah, I, I used to do assessments with children that have been trafficked. So I spent many years doing that sort of stuff and private fostering that isn't private fostering, if you know what I mean, you know what that is, don't you, where a child's brought over and yeah. fostered, but obviously it's not how we would appear 
you know, the word private fostering conjures up all these things of like, oh, it's private. It's like private education. It's private fostering. It isn't that at all, is it? It's where some abstract person is called an auntie who is probably paid to look after a child and not very well. So, you know, uh, through through um, illegal forces. So I used to do that as well. I used to do that. So I would work with these children and I, um, it, it seems like a long time ago now, but obviously the the experience I had with that, I can bring to my work. Um, and and there's still, it's still happening. You know, there's still a huge amount of children that are, you know, there's a lot of stuff in the news as well um, about children being used for ritual and satanic abuse as well. So there's stuff going on that's been going on for years, but we just don't, you know, we just don't hear about it that often. It's all coming out now, though, if you notice, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So it's our job, isn't it, really, um, as as conscious beings to really help these children know that they're these incredible beings of light and they have incredible potential and possibility and they're going to be our next thought leaders and, you know, parents and and it's exciting. I love working with teenagers. I absolutely love it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah Katie thank you for your input with that yeah okay um who else have I got Tina Tina I never did get hold of you are you there yeah. oh you are there I couldn't hear you can you hear me can anyone hear or is it just me no can you tiny tiny Tina can you speak up Can you speak up? Um, maybe the reception's not very good or something. I don't know. Can you type, Tina? Can you type in the chat something that you want to say? Sorry, I can't hear you. Um, Jennifer. Jennifer. Can't get Jennifer either. I don't know what's happened to Jennifer. Never mind. Wendy's just saying about social media as well. So thinking for you, Katie, and, and you know, adolescents, you know, social media, obviously there's social media bullying and stuff like that. So we really do need to help. It's not about social media, is it? It's about the, you know, self-worth and so on that, that, that people feel or don't feel. So, okay. So it's 20 to 10 here in the UK. So I'm probably going to wrap up, um, a bit now. Now our plan, Wendy and I had put together uh, a Wednesday evening, not this Wednesday, um, but next Wednesday if people are open to it and um, to do it at eight o'clock on, on a Wednesday uh, because I'm trying to balance it with my children and with the timings of the UK and the timings internationally. So, uh, so children from other countries can join as well and parents from other countries and teachers. So I'm trying to do that because my, my um, network is actually global. So I just kind of wanted to invite that possibility to people. And so I was thinking next Wednesday evening, um, and I was thinking a donation basis so that means that it allows people that perhaps aren't working at the moment uh, the ability to join and not to feel that it's out of their reach. And uh, so it starts at a pound, which I thought was, you know, most, most people can afford that. And then it goes up in increments. So whatever you feel you can afford or what you would like to pay. And, um, and just please share it. You know, if you feel that, that you would like to share this conversation with someone, then yeah, share it. You know, you, I give you that, give you that opportunity to share it. I was going to live stream it. And then I thought, no, I'm going to, I'm going to just talk to you guys, the ones that are signed up. But if you have a friend you want to share it with, that's absolutely fine. Or indeed a teacher that you know that you would like to. And um, my door's open. So if anybody wants to contact me um, just privately, you can private message me on Facebook. You can, it's just my name, Susan Kennard. You can um, look at my stuff on my YouTube channel as well, just to get a sense of who I am. I have a podcast called The Spiritual Awakener where you can listen to my story if you want to on episode one, but you can also hear to some, hear some people that I interview. And so that, that happens every Thursday. Um, a new episode goes out every Thursday. I run lots and lots of adult things as well. 
So if you are open to retreats, I do inner child healing retreats. Um, it's all online. So it's all accessible. Um, and I do obviously do one-to-one -one work as well. And there's an offer on at the moment uh, for the month of May and June. So if you wanted to do some of your own inner work, you can. Uh, what else do I do? I have a, oh yeah, I have a few other groups I run. And I also do a really cool moon meditation at the full moon and the, the new moon which is where we do healing and uh, talk about the astrology of the month so that's really fun and really cool so i do lots and lots of things so if you're interested in uh, joining my newsletter if i don't know you and i haven't met you before join my newsletter which is just my website susankennard.co.uk so it's all under my name and uh, you'll just get signed up and you'll see everything that happens and you'll get a free meditation as well. So it's been a pleasure. If anyone's got anything else they want to say, you can say it definitely now. Let me just put my chat. Does anybody want to say, okay, Lansing, thank you, Lansing. Thank you for being here and thank you for, for, for sharing that this was on yeah oh thanks susan yeah no it is exciting and i you know i think that we can definitely do something and i think we can even if we have two children or three children you know then we can grow it you know and then we can see that other children might want to join because their friend joins or someone they know joins and they get a lot from it so uh and we can just evolve it you know we can just see how they feel all right okay great <laughs> thanks michelle thank you that's really sweet of you okay great great katie thank you and i'll and i'll definitely um oh thank you i can't wait to learn from you as well uh because we all learn from each other right you know we never stop learning so yeah it'd be really exciting to to connect with you it's been lovely to meet you yeah can families just show up on a wednesday so laurie what it is is you have to sign up like we always do so wendy has created um the links for it which she'll send out on on the email. So when I I'll send this out, and then she'll send out an email to everybody that was signed up to this this event this evening, and essentially um, it will have a link on it. So a similar link to you had here, but this one will have the date and the time, and it will have um, the donation part as well. So once you've done the donation part, you get all you know how it works, Laurie. You've done loads of this stuff. So essentially then. Any, any family, even if they haven't been on this call, can show up, okay? As long as you explain to them what, how it would work, you know, what the format would be, okay? Um, I'll, I'll get them to, to kind of email me. Uh, so let's have a look, anything else? Yeah, and you don't have to come every week. So I think one of the things that Wendy and I were talking about was that let's just do it on a week by week basis, right? To start with, let's just do it on a week by week basis and then if a child a child doesn't want to come in they don't have to come again you know i don't want to put anybody under any like you've got a book a six week block of you know these classes i think it's really important to have this as an empowering session not one where they're forced to do it because at school quite often let's face it they have to sit still when they have to do it even if they don't want to so i definitely don't want to be that representative and also the other thing is is that if they want to leave at any time they i don't want them to feel that they have to stay so if they don't like it or they feel uncomfortable then it's okay to go as well yeah and it's okay to turn the video off, whatever. It's it's okay. It's just an open door, really. Oh, here's my son. Do you want to kind of bring this is our puppy? <laughs> this is Buddy, our puppy. Do you want to say hi, Martin? Just say a quick hi, you've been asleep. Yeah. Do you want to say a quick hi? Yeah. No, you don't want to. Okay, he doesn't want to say quick hi, my eleven year old, but this is our puppy. He's growing, Michelle, isn't he? He's growing. He's just like a fluffy cloud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can take him out and he can take it that's it oh my son is here but he doesn't want to be seen <laughs> probably Susan a bit like yours your 11 year old <laughs> yeah yeah he's very cute okay so thank you so much please you know um Talia wants him <laughs> somebody wants our puppy no they can't have you <laughs> and um it's been great to to meet those of you that I haven't met before 
please feel free to talk to your friends about this and anybody who, who works in the field of children and uh, look forward to seeing you. So we'll send out the email, we'll send out the links and uh, look forward to seeing you next week, week after, not this Wednesday, but the following one. Much love. See you very soon. Bye for now. <laughs>